Hello, uh, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a isometric uh, 2D. So right now we have a 2D game object, but when you play it, it looks and feels like a 3D, right? 2D in 3D plane, so here right now it's in 2D view mode. You could look, look here, it's just basically a sp two sprites. And so, this would, the, the tank would just randomly uh, rotate it. And see, even though it's 2D, it feels and looks like 3D. So if, if oh, let's just avoid it if you move the whole thing around. Uh, here. Right? It looks and feel like 3D, but instead it's just 2D, right? Usually the tank would just move that way horizontally, that way, right? right? It's a metric viewpoint, but the top looks like 3D. This is a uh, very good uh, performance if you're looking to make a game that would uh, utilize, uh, I guess, performance base. For example, if you have a large map of a uh, procedural generated world, uh, this would be the ideal choice instead of rendering a you know 3D cube, which is quite expensive since they have more planes. So one, two, right? So 2D is is less complex than 3D uh, in terms of rendering and uh, physics and other stuff. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to do it in uh, using bo both Blender and uh, Unity 2D. So let's jump into a Blender. So here on this uh, Blender file, well in this Blender file we have a tank top, so just the turret, not the turret, the gun. Uh, and here we have the body. Yeah, let's press that. Right, right. The body is just red tank right there. Um, so what we have to do here, we basically have to generate a 360 sprite. So, yeah, the animation, let's go to action. You see these keyframes. Basically, each frame would render one sprite until you get 360. So, and here we have, have already generated it, but if you have set up your animation and everything ready, you press Ctrl uh, S12. But if you just want to render, just press F12. And like so. And here is just the render of the first frame. But if you want R360, you press Ctrl 12 to render the animation, which would be render this each keyframe until you get to 360. I have already done that. So I'll, be, I'll show you. Uh, oops, here, right here we have a top part, and here's the body. So from one to let's say here, the rank goes different to three sixty, which is the same position. Um, right. So now let's jump into Unity. Inside the project, and inside this resource sprite, and we have the support tank. We have 360, uh, 360 sprites for each three frame. So the animation would run on each one of that. You can see on the right, the rotation will be changed based on that. Right, the same thing applies to the top part. Like so. Alright. And then I would just go back the same thing. Anyway, let's jump to, into the script. The script is simple. Uh, we have uh, the body and the top. So the body part is just there, the top. Right now the body part is empty. So we're not doing anything to that. But the top part is unique. So here, let's take a look at the script. First, we have the degree value, which would keep track of the degree of the object is rotating. So it says, yeah, um, here we start the coroutine, 
of randomly uh, rotate every three seconds. So every three seconds, it would output the rotate a string, and then it would it would start another protein which just render the animation. Inside the render animation, we rotate the degree. So here, should we rotate forward or backward? This is based on if it, if the degree is less or greater than zero. If you subtract the final to the initial, basically we want to find the distance as the closest to rotate to. So we don't want to spin three sixty to get you know to get to uh, let's say you are at what forty five degree. You want to get back to fifteen degree. You don't want to spin three sixty till you get to fifteen. You want to determine if you want to rotate back or forward, right? Back or forward. Basically, just want to just return a you know, this function, just return a boolean, and then we just add or subtract the degree. Once we get to the degree, we just need the sprite name. We get the sprite name based on the degree. So here, digits basically turn normal uh, degree into that. So 0001, 002 or 0360, right, would be get that on that based on the degree that's trying to rotate to. So each uh, sprite, uh, you know what I mean, uh, each, lo uh, uh, <laughs> each uh, location has its own uh, keyframe, or this sprite, uh, let's get back, so here, right, and here again, it's, yeah, and the degree again, this would pretty much just add the zero in front of it, based on the string of the uh, of the degree that given. So here would be, uh, so for example, this would output by single thing, or uh, top would be the top part, and then zero 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 sum of a degree here. So. And like so, and then here we just here we can actually just output it. We would show the name of the sprite, and then here we just get the component. Uh, oops, not this. Yeah, we just get the render of the sprite. So the top that component, and we just change right. We just iterate over and over. We just change that in there, and. Yeah, simple enough. Uh, it's basically how most of the animation work. Just go through each sprite per frame, or faster if you want to. Uh, but in this case, we can we just use this. Uh, where the hell is that? Okay. And then protein, right? You just per frame, you just you return, and then next frame will do this until the degree is the same as the one that you get. You, yeah, you get to the parameter, right? So here, let's see in the action. I just check. right. So right now we are rotating. Let's see. Oh, let's actually. So here again, the sprite based on the sprite name. So zero two eight zero. It would be two eighty eighty degree to eighty three degree. Right. Just remove that. No, not this one. Now we just want to comment this out and run. But oh, not that one. Um, okay, should not output that anymore. Hmm, which part is it outputting? Did I compile it? So yeah, let's play. Okay, something wrong here. What's going on? Let me quit this. Maybe it's out of sync. Let's go to the top part. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It is weird. It's so weird. Uh, why is it still working? Deeper dog log spray name. Yeah, something wrong with my 
in my editor, but it's okay. Um, we just want to see the rotation anyway. Um, oh, no, mine. So what's that? Oh, wait, what's that happened there? Okay, maybe. Okay, that seems like a bug for the editor. So right now we can see that it's rotating based on the uh, the values given to it. So here yeah, every three seconds it would just rotate to that. So 184, then 343, and 218, and then 22, like so. Um, this also works for the body. So if we cop basically just copy the script. Uh, Let's just copy and paste and change this to uh, body rotate area and then we just bring that the same thing so let's see uh, run compile and then yep think across oh I forgot to change the uh, no, not that one I forgot to change the body is there something wrong with my editor? It's not compiling. Attach Unity, yeah. And play. Oh. Yeah, let's do that. That's weird. That shouldn't be that. Uh, body. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's not compiling. Simple, yeah, it should be that. Is this script wrong? So Tanya, you should be fine. Here, let's try to debug the lock right name. That should give that, not the top. I don't want the top. Super tank top, yeah. And yeah, super tank body, I mean. This should be super tank body here. Yeah. And I want to play. There you go. For some reason, it's not. There you go, V60. Yeah, there we go. I want that anymore. I do not want to upload the sprite name anymore. Uh oh. Let's try again. No, stop. Okay, there you go. No, my. So here, rotate to 9. I just keep rotating, but behind scene. It's just basic sprite rotating. It's very useful when you uh, have a large unit of objects. So you can minimize the uh, the rendering time and many things cheaper in terms of performance. Like so. Very useful. Um, yeah, I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching. And goodbye.